Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Aisha Ibrahim. The Kingdom of Bahrain is set to host a sub-regional workshop organized by the World Organization for Animal Health, WOAH Middle East, on the impact of the Veterinary Services Evaluation Methodology on supporting the public-private partnerships on July 11th to 13th. Minister of Municipalities Affairs and Agriculture, Wael Limbarek, pointed out that the workshop aims to build sound foundations for a productive partnership between the public and private sectors in the veterinary field, which are related to the specific uh, priorities of the country or the entire region. He stressed the importance of the workshop in enhancing cooperation between Bahrain and WOAH to serve uh, programs and activities related to animal wealth and animal health, affirming Bahrain's readiness to support the programs of the WOAH uh, sub-regional offices for the Gulf states. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs expresses the Kingdom of Bahrain's support for measures to maintain security, civil peace and public order in the friendly French Republic, calling for the need to reduce escalation, calm and respect for the country's laws. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs affirms uh, Bahrain's uh, confidence and France's ability to overcome these events and the French government's keenness to apply justice in everyone in accordance with the approved laws. A delegation representing the Royal Humanitarian Foundation RHF arrived in Damascus to continue providing assistance to quick hate people in Syria. The delegation, which comprises specialists Abdul Rahman Al Naham and Fatma Al Mansouri, will carry a consultancy program and visit the people who were affected by the devastating earthquake to alleviate the post tumor psychological impact. Health Ministry Under Secretary Dr. Wael Al Mana stressed the importance of the program, which aims to provide support to Syrian people and help them overcome the post quake trauma. Saudi Minister of Foreign Affairs Prince Faisal bin Farhan bin Abdullah made a telephone call with the Foreign Minister of the Republic of Turkey, Hakan Fidan. During the conversation, the two ministers discussed various ways to enhance and develop relations between the two countries and strengthen coordination across all sectors. Both ministers also exchanged viewpoints on regional and international matters of mutual concern. The General Directorate of Passports in Saudi Arabia has confirmed its readiness to complete the departure procedures of pilgrims for this year's Hajj season at the various international ports of the Kingdom, air, land and sea, and to facilitate their travel after they completed performing the Hajj rituals. The General Directorate of Passports indicated that it has harnessed all its human capabilities and technologies supported by modern security systems to implement this stage of its plan for the Hajj season and to provide all necessary services to facilitate the departure of pilgrims with ease and comfort. Saudi Arabia's Ministry of Islamic Affairs, Da'wah and Guidance began distributing 2 million copies of the Qur'an. Saudi press agency reported that the copies are being provided as a gift from the custodian of the two holy mosques to pilgrims who are departing for their home countries from King Abdulaziz International Airport, Jeddah Islamic Port, as well as other land and airports following the annual Hajj pilgrimage, which commences and concluded this week. The ministry is also distributing gift copies to public employees who served during this year's Hajj season. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia ranked first globally in the Government Strategy Index for Artificial Intelligence on the indicators of the global classification of artificial intelligence issued by Tertus Intelligence, which is evaluates more than 60 countries in the world. Germany and China secured the second and third rankings, respectively. The global ranking of artificial intelligence incorporates more than 100 indicators organized into seven sub-pillars, government strategy, research, development, talent, infrastructure, operating environment, and commercial. The kingdom secured 31st position in the total classification indicators and has made a remarkable achievement securing 100% in all criteria of the index relating to artificial intelligence. 
This includes the establishment of the national uh, strategy for data and AI within the kingdom, the presence of a dedicated government authority for artificial intelligence, the allocation of funding and budget for AI initiatives, and the formulation and monitoring of national targets for artificial intelligence. This a significant achievement by the kingdom perfectly aligns with the overarching goals of Saudi Vision 2030, which aims to position the country permanently in global indicators across various domains. The United Arab Emirates has paved a path that will help the country create sustainable projects with various strategic plans and a long-term vision of the leaders of the country for the well-being of the country. By building enablers that contribute to the fulfillment of sustainable development goals, UAE has set an example of how careful long-term planning will help in achieving goals. Under the framework of the Vision 2021, UAE has plans and initiatives for sustainable infrastructure planned in each emirate. The UAE government aims to invest 600 um, United Arab dirhams a billion by 2050 to meet the growing energy demand and ensure a sustainable growth for the country's economy. Projects such as a Masdar City in Abu Dhabi, Sustainable City in Dubai and Sharjah have created pathways for the UAE to become a key player and the world for building sustainable infrastructure. The state of Kuwait took part in the 43rd session of the General Conference of the UN Food and Agriculture Organization FAO, which kicked off yesterday at the organization's headquarters in Rome, with Kuwait delegation being led by Ambassador in Rome, Nasser al Ghattani. The Kuwaiti ambassador spoke highly of FAO's role in achieving food security and sustainable development. In a statement to Kuwait news agency on the fringes of the conference, the ambassador said that the state of Kuwait believes in the active role of the UN agency in ensuring healthy food and sound nutrition in the framework of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. The Sultanate of Amman continues to be one of the best performing economies in the Gulf region, with its gross domestic product reaching 8.7 billion Omani reals, that's 22.6 billion US dollars at constant prices in the first quarter of 2023. According to data revealed by Oman's National Center for Statistics and Information, showed that the country registered a 4.7% increase in the GDP at the end of the first quarter, compared to the same period last year. The report added that the increase is primarily driven by non-petroleum activities that recorded a 4.6% increase year-on-year year to reach 6.07 billion riyals in the first quarter of 2023. Moreover, petroleum activities witnessed an increase of 3.5% during the same period to reach 2.8 billion riyals. The Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities launched the 15th edition of Bahrain Summer Festival today. This year's edition will embrace a new identity inspired by the nature of Bahrain and its ancient cultural heritage. The festival presents an extensive program of cultural activities, which include a series of workshops presented by artists, craftsmen and specialists in cultural centers around the kingdom. The cultural performances will start on July 6th with a circus show All Stars coming from Australia to Bahrain at 8 p.m. The event will be held over three consecutive days and admission will be free. As for the first week of the festival, it will include many workshops with handicrafts, plastic arts, traditional arts and many others. Families and children can register for the workshops and obtain more information by visiting the authorities' website. 